Hi, and welcome to Scratch Made Sunday at our small table, the day where we take a little extra time to make something that normally you would just buy in the store, but it's much more delicious when you make it from scratch. Today we're putting on the Ritz and making butter crackers. Here's our finished dish. Let's see how we got here. At times this will be a little bit loud on camera and I apologize, but that's just how food processors work. This is my mini food processor. If you have a larger one, then you can make a double batch of this, but a larger batch won't fit in a mini food processor. We've got our flour already in here. I'm going to add our salt and baking powder. And the sugar. and give that a quick pulse to combine it. Now we're just going to start adding our cold butter, small amounts at a time, and pulse to combine. Continue like that until all of the cold butter has been incorporated, and I'll be right back. All of our butter is combined now, so we're going to add the vegetable oil. And once again, get that combined. I forgot to mention that our oven is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And always when you're using a machine, you want to get the sides scraped down. Just a little bit more. Now, we've measured out a third cup of water but you may not need that much, depending on your elevation and the humidity, things like that. So you start with a small amount, you pulse that to combine it, add a little bit more, and continue. When your dough starts to form a ball, that's when you stop, no matter how much more you have left. So we'll go ahead and get started. And I'll be back when we've got as much water in as necessary so we can see the texture of it. As you can see, I have a lot of water left here, but my dough is coming together and I don't want to add any more. I did, before the final addition, scrape all the way down to the bottom because for a mini processor, there is a small gap between the blade and the bottom of the food processor and so crumbs can get stuck down there that need to be incorporated and if there's a lot of dry mix underneath the blade then you might need more water. Since I've already done that we can go ahead and clear some things away. We're going to roll this out and get it cut. And I'll be right back. Once you've got your dough rolled out nice and thinly, you just want to start cutting out your crackers. You can use whatever shapes you'd like, but try to keep them about the circumference of Ritz crackers that you get in the store. Otherwise, you'll have to bake them for a different length of time and they may not puff up properly and you want to go ahead and give them some little holes. I'm using the back of a toothpick for this. The holes are not just a decorative thing, they're necessary for the bake. 
if you'd like you can even do little smiley faces or whatever you'd like and then transfer these to a parchment lined or silpat lined baking tray and they will go into the oven for about 10 minutes or until they're just beginning to brown. We'll be right back. Right at the end of the cook time, you want to get your butter melted, add some salt. I have a very salty palate, so I tend to add a little bit more salt than is called for. But if you've never made the recipe before, you probably want to start with what it calls for, and you can always adjust up. And you can sprinkle more salt on the crackers afterwards as well. And we're going to set that aside. And that's going to be brushed over the crackers. So I'll be right back. Get those out of the oven. And just the moment that they come out of the oven, you want to start brushing them with that salty butter. You can see that the ones that I did a good job of rolling thinly have browned much better than the ones that I wasn't as careful with. As they cool, they will continue to get crispy. But it is a reminder to try and roll as thin as you possibly can. For this part, I like to push them all close together because as you can see, I'm getting a lot of this butter mixture in between. And so this keeps me from wasting too much of it. Then I'll spread them apart a little bit so they can cool without touching each other. And that is all that there is to it. These can be used just as crackers. They're delicious, just like any butter crackers that you would buy. You can also use them the way that you would use butter crackers in recipes. You can crumb them and use them as crusts or as toppings or whatever you'd like. They work just the same as the store-bought ones, except that you know exactly what's in them because you control the ingredients. Thanks for joining me today at Our Small Table. The recipe we've used is linked in the video description and is available at OurSmallTable.com. Join us in the middle of the week for our regular recipe and next Sunday for the next Scratch Made Sunday.